Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jim McDonald, and this is Andy Mead, and we're from Sky IQ. Uh, and we'd like to talk to you for the next 20 minutes or so about the changing landscape of television, and in particular, television advertising, which we will believe, which we believe, will be at the forefront of a significant transformation of existing marketing practices. Can can everybody hear? Louder. Okay. Right. We foresee a program of innovation that will enable advertisers to be far more targeted in reaching their customers than ever before. This information-led progression will be pivotal in making commercial TV an even more effective advertising medium and marketing medium than it is today. As a consequence of leaps in technology, we'll be able to develop unparalleled insights into viewing behaviour. In turn, these insights will help in shaping optimal marketing strategy across all the potential channels at a marketer's disposal. So this morning, we'll be talking about how powerful television advertising can be. But don't just take my word for it. Here's some ads from the last 12 months, and you can judge for yourselves. So some messages from our commercial sponsors. So, some great TV ads from 2012. I hope you enjoyed them and that some of them, or all of them, struck a chord with you. All of those commercials tell us something about a brand and helped to make those brands more famous. Some of them might have made you laugh or even rub your eyes in disbelief because it's not every day that you see a jumbo jet taxiing across Westminster Bridge. And of course, some helped in delivering real business results. That heartwarming John Lewis snowman ad is credited with ensuring that their critical pre-Christmas trading period was successful. TV is part of our lives. It touches us on a daily basis, it breaks down barriers, and it brings people together. It's cultural and social glue. It's not just talking at school or work about what was on telly the night before. See how Facebook and Twitter usage spikes during event programmes such as The X Factor and I'm a Celebrity. We love to talk, text and tweet about TV almost as much as we love to watch it. We all have our favourite programmes and films and we all remember adverts that have made us laugh, touched us emotionally or, heaven forbid, prompted us to buy something. And if you ask people what their favourite ad is, 99% of them will pick a TV ad. And that's because TV ads are memorable, they're enjoyable and they work and more about that shortly. Television stimulates the emotions and the long-term memory. We can remember ads we loved from years ago, from laughing Martians promoting instant mashed potato to drumming gorillas trying to sell you chocolate bars. But the world, is t a world of TV is changing as we become more technologically advanced. If we go back 30 years, we lived in a world of only three television channels. Only one of them, ITV, carried any advertising. Since then, there's been an explosion in the number of channels that are available to us, to the point where there's over 500 in the UK today. Watching the telly used to be a pretty straightforward pastime. The only option for the viewer was to pick up the Radio Times, check what programming had been scheduled by television companies on their behalf, turn on their set and watch. This has now transformed into a multifunctional connected world with smart TVs enabling the consumer to watch what they want, when they want, and to interact with and influence the content that they see. And, and with the introduction of other viewing enabled devices, there is added complexity to our viewing behavior watching TV on our laptops, our tablets, and our mobile phones. The way we consume telly is changing, and the increases in choices as to how and what we view has meant we're more individual in our viewing behavior. The days of being able to regularly reach 20 million people with a single spot in Coronation Street are behind us. But despite this fragmentation in the way that we watch TV, the total amount of television that we watch is not declining, just the opposite in fact. We're watching more TV today than ever before. Four hours of television per person per day on average. That means that each of us on average are watching over 28 hours every week. And as such, 
television has unrivaled reach from a marketing perspective. If you want to get your commercial message in front of a mass audience, there's still no better way than a television campaign. And in 2013, four billion pounds of marketing budgets will be spent on television in the UK. The medium, which has flourished in comparison to other above the line media, because we know it works. We know if we invest in a TV campaign, it will build brand fame. It can drive sales and deliver more profitability than any other advertising investment. Here's two quotes from marketing directors, each with quite different levels of budget, who clearly see and believe in the power of television and what TV can do for their brands. And there are numerous research studies from independent, respected sources which underline the return on investment that TV can deliver. For instance, PricewaterhouseCoopers' payback study looked at over 10 years of data for 700 brands across diverse product categories, from breakfast cereals to insurance to cars. It found that TV delivered the highest return of any medium, £4.50 for every pound spent. And that TV investment in year one was still paying back in year four. It's not just a short-term fix. But the variety of ways in which to consume TV today represents a challenge for marketers. And with so much choice about where to put adverts, it's difficult for us to know which ones are really working and which aren't in terms of reaching and engaging our audience. There's a famous quote that I'm sure most of you will be familiar with that goes, I know half my money I spend is on advertising is wasted, but the problem is I don't know which half. This is variously attributed to Lord Leverhulme, the founder of Unilever, as it has been here, but also to John Wanamaker from the, uh, from the US, who was a retail magnate in the early part of the last century. Both of them pioneers of marketing. So who said it? Who said it first? To be honest, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that the principle remains fundamentally true. Marketers know that advertising works, but can't be sure how or why it works, and therefore don't know which elements of their advertising work the hardest. TV advertising is the best example of this. Andy will now outline to you as to how that's changing, that we're now on a path where advertisers and marketeers can gain deeper, fuller and richer insight as to how marketing investments, starting with TV, can be evaluated, optimised and to make, made to work even harder in reaching viewers and customers. Thank you, Jim. Good morning, everyone. I uh, certainly enjoyed seeing some adverts from last year there. But that's the thing about TV, isn't it? It's not just ads that we saw last year that we remember. I remember ads that I saw years ago when I was growing up as a kid, and I bet many of you are the same. They connected with us either on a personal level, maybe made us laugh, or made us think it wasn't that clever. And they stuck in our minds for that reason for many years. I'll always remember the John West salmon advert. Does anyone remember this one? <laughs> With the fisherman that fights the bear to get to the salmon. It's a classic. We would have loved to show it today, but the quality on YouTube isn't, isn't that good. But uh, we'll look it up. But I think given this power of television, it's no surprise that we continue to invest £4 billion a year to make it successful. But not only that, we continue as marketers to seek out new and improved ways of harnessing its power. How can we stimulate not just our customers' minds, but our own businesses? And this isn't an easy challenge. The key question, who's watching what, isn't the easy one that it was in the world of three channels. And the truth is, we've struggled to answer it for many years. We've tried to plug the gaps with surveys, but this is always met with a certain degree of scepticism. It's the old adage, how truthful are we, when we're asked at the doctors how many units of alcohol have we drank a week. But if the goal is to make TV work as hard as possible for us, surely we need to know what our target audience is watching, so that we can put adverts where they're going to be and drive more sales as a result. It's common sense. So we've started on a journey at Sky IQ 
to try to fill this void in the marketer's toolbox by creating a viewing panel of our own. As you can see here, 500,000 households collecting viewing behaviours via the set-top box and press of the remote. So we can now answer that question, who's watching what, with more precision than ever before. Much more than that, we can tell you what channels are they watching. And the fact that we've got 500,000 households means that we've got really good coverage for the first time across 550 channels. What are their favourite programmes? Did they see an advert that we put out? How many times did they see that advert? What time of day are we most likely to connect with them? What paths do they take on TV from programme to programme and channel to channel? And more importantly, what does that tell us about them? Do they watch more live or recorded television? And then Jim touched on the growing complexity of how we as consumers are consuming TV today through devices. And Sky Go is my favourite app at the moment because gone are the days I have to miss important football matches when I go to my folks, they don't have Sky. I feel bad about going to the pub to watch the football so I have to miss a game. But I don't have to anymore because I can watch that on my iPad along with any other Sky content. It's fantastic. And unsurprisingly, it's a very popular app. So over 350,000 households from our panel have this app. And if you ask any marketer or anyone involved in television, they're very interested to understand more about this behavior, consumption of television through devices and how that compares to linear TV. So we know the panel wouldn't be complete without it and we're very excited that soon we'll be able to help with this as well. So some really interesting and potentially very powerful capabilities in the right hands. And by the right hands, I mean those committed to harnessing that power of TV that we're talking about. And let's not forget that this is behavioural data. It's not collected from people saying or thinking. People don't always say what they think or say what they do, but if we can observe doing, then that's different. It was Confucius that once said, all men are alike, it is their habits that set them far apart. So to bring this to life, I'm going to talk you through an example of how this panel might be used in the real world. And in this example, the company in question is a travel company selling luxury cruises. Now typically, even though this travel company might hold a huge amount of useful insight and information on its target audience, that it might use to understand whether they're most likely to be interested in a cruise or buy a cruise, when it comes to television, that target audience has to be morphed into something that best fits with age and social class. So you can see we take something that's quite sharp and then it becomes quite broad. It wouldn't be unusual, for example, that this target audience became ABC One adults, which represents 50% of the population. Now, to put that in perspective, cruise penetration in the UK was under 3% last year. And even then, we'd be left with a very small viewing panel from which to begin to understand behaviours on television, what they're watching, across 550 channels. And we begin to run out of room pretty quickly. But with this new panel, the advertiser can now begin to work in its own language. It might choose to consider affluence, geography, marital status, whether they bought a cruise last year, life stage, all very good indicators of whether somebody is likely to be interested in a cruise. And now they can take this target audience and match it to our panel, and they'll still be left, because of the size of our panel, with a very robust sample, many thousands, from which to understand viewing behaviours. So in the world we're talking about, where we find it difficult to understand what our target audience is watching, this is gold dust, because we can use this insight to plan next time around. And putting it simply, we can put adverts in places where we're going to have a dense concentration of that target audience and drive more sales as a result, sell more cruises in this case. And this is very much live, so we're talking in the here and now. So we've already begun to use this insight at Sky, and we're also working with a host of other advertisers across a range of industries. But it's not just with regards to targeting that this panel is useful. For the first time, a brand can understand whether people that bought its products or services saw an advert, or how many times they saw an advert. 
So Jim talked about that famous quote, I know half of my advertising is wasted, I just don't know what half. But now, if we can understand which adverts are having an impact and which adverts aren't, then in a world of television, we're starting to rise to Lord Leverhulme's challenge, or whoever it was that said it. I'm sure there have been many over the years. And then if we combine that knowledge of who's seen an advert with record of the direct mail that we've sent them or the phone conversations that we've had, then it begins to get very interesting indeed for us as a marketer because we can build a truer path to purchase. On top of this, we can drive a huge amount of insight from 1,400 hours of behavioural viewing data per annum per household. And we can use this information to augment our understanding of our customers today to build on segmentations that we have already. So as you can see, it starts to op open up opportunities not only for TV but across the marketing mix because we can use that increased understanding to feed into creative and that creative can be deployed across any channel, not just television. So we talked in the beginning about how we as consumers are becoming more sophisticated in the way we consume television. But it's not just in TV that we're becoming more sophisticated. We're much more complex than we were 10 years ago or even five years ago. Back in the old days, we could maybe invest all of our budget into television and that would drive enough people into our stores who would buy our products and our businesses would flourish. It was very simple. And back in those days, it wouldn't be uncommon for us to adopt an approach preached by Don Draper from Mad Men here. People tell you who they are, but we ignore it because we want them to be who we want them to be. As advertisers, we could impose our will on the consumer much more than we can today. Today's consumer has become empowered by choice and does not just accept what is thrust at them from an advertiser. Our expectations as consumers are higher and the way that we interact with brands is much less easy to predict. Now, in addition to other traditional media, such as DM, outdoor, and, and so on, we also have email, search, display, social media. And the consumer has his or her laptop, their tablet, their smartphone, their smart TV, their Facebook account, and the list goes on. So this represents a challenge for marketers in our quest to send relevant, timely communications, but also an opportunity because the good news is that we can understand so much more about our consumers' behaviours and preferences today if we listen in the right places and we can use this insight to formulate more relevant communications. So to summarise, this panel can help a marketer understand the viewer but we must link it to information we can gather from other sources such as social media and other interactions for it to become really powerful. What's around the corner? In this ever-changing world, the truth is we don't know. Many people said that TV would die with the birth of the internet, and we know the opposite has proved to be true, in fact. But I dare say it won't be long before we're watching an advert and we can click a button and the product will be shipped to our doors the next day. That can only just be around the corner. And this will make it even more important for us to understand our audience. Because what's for certain is that, as marketers, we need to continue in the quest for an increased understanding of our customers' behaviours and, pre and preferences so that we can communicate with that relevancy that we seek and stand out from the noise, the marketing clutter that we're surrounded by every day as a consumer. The nirvana for us in marketing is the complete picture. Every interaction and response for all our customers and prospects held in a central repository. And we yearn for this because only when we get to this point can we truly be optimising across the marketing budget? And we must keep striving to get there because the landscape out there is changing at such a pace that the minute we take our eye off it, we'll be in danger of falling behind. We're going to finish with another quote, again from the Mad Wen era, this one quite to the contrary from Howard Gassage, who is a non fictional character, who said that nobody reads ads, people read what interests them, sometimes it's an ad. Now, whether we're talking about reading ads or watching ads, the message is the same. People only pay attention to what interests them. And we think he got it right. Understand your audience, use that understanding to communicate, them in a communicate with them in a relevant way, 
and you will give yourself the best chance of success. I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, myself and Jim can help with any questions you might have.